Hi there, my name is Suzanne Vertinen from Discover Change and I'm here with Sarah Potter. Hi Sarah. Hi Suzanne, you okay? I'm excellent, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good, thank you. Good, great. And um, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me today. We're just going to have a brief uh, conversation today on our series of leading conversations just to discuss with you how you started Peer Genius. Sarah, you have just built um, a, a fantastic concept and really massively grown and scaled it as well even to a global level. So it's been really inspiring to see your growth. And we collaborated a, a couple of months on the development of that, but like you said at one point, you've really kind of been unleashed to the market and you've been working at high level uh, with HR directors. And what we'd like to just to discuss with you in this um, brief uh, video is really what your background is. Why did you start Peer Genius? Um, how did you actually get started and what did you do to create that really valuable offer uh, for such a high level buyer and also you know I know that your business is a lot based on partnerships so we would love to hear a couple of tips on maybe for entrepreneurs and business owners who want to scale their business maybe how have you used partnerships sponsorships your events to really kind of match people together so it's been inspiring to see your growth and I really look forward to hearing um, you Sarah a little bit about your story and and where is Peer Genius going as well so carry on and thank you for being here today yeah, no problem. It's a pleasure to be here and thank you for having me. Um, so, yeah, so I've got um, 12 years experience working in um, HR. And um, the reason why I got into HR um, was because I really liked people. Um, but then learned quite fast that it's actually quite difficult if you like people to be sacking people. Um, so obviously with HR, it is the hiring and firing. Um, and throughout my career, I did find um, that I was dealing with um, a lot of complaints, um, performance issues, um, Fitness absence um, issues, so it's really, really negative. Um, so, as I'm quite a positive person, it sort of can have its toll on you. Um, and I just felt really lonely, isolated. Um, I was doing a national role, um, so I was sort of leaving the house at five in the morning, not getting back till seven at night, um, and spending sort of three hours of time um, in the car on my own. Um, I didn't feel like I could turn to any of my team members at the time. Um, my manager was 150 miles away in the head office. So it just felt really, really lonely. Um, and also had a bit of imposter syndrome as well. It's like, can I, can I do this? Um, and then you, you don't get any thanks for it. So as much as I was sort of like working really hard, putting all the hours in, um, and really trying to sort of turn it around so that I wasn't firefighting all the time, um, I then just got um, given a load of appeals, um, which were in Scotland and London and Wales. Um, so even further away from home. Um, so as I really sort of into the coaching um, and mentoring and upskilling of managers, um, I was able to say reduce my individual caseload so I can work on some training and behavioural side of things um, that I'm really passionate about and having a bit of a legacy that I leave. Um, I was actually doing even more firefighting and more intense cases. Um, so it actually had the adverse effect. Um, so really almost like hard. be careful what you wish for, isn't it? Sometimes? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally. yeah. I was like, this can't be sort of the way that HR is. Um, so I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm. Um, so for me, um, it was almost like I, I couldn't really turn to a company that I thought was really great to work for. Um, so it was almost like I'll, I'll set up my own. Um, and during that, I, I am my own worst boss. I'm the worst boss I've ever had. I work too hard. I work really long hours. Um, I haven't had a holiday since I started this in September, so coming up for a year. Um, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, so I love what I do. So now utilising my HR experiences and my qualifications, um, I now run events for HR directors and HR professionals. Um, so I give them that safe space. So that place that I didn't have um, at the end of a bad day or bad week or bad month, um, in fact, like a bad year sometimes, um, <laughs> was to really build your resilience. Um, so to hear from peers, hear that H HR is interpreted so many different ways in different cases because it's dealing with people. So the theory doesn't always fit. Um, so again, I felt like what I'd learned from a qualification point of view didn't put me in good stead for what I was actually going to have to do in my real job. Mm. Um, and you only learn in HR when you do it. So you're thrown at the deep end and you're expected to sink or swim. And again, that can be really damaging on your confidence. 
Um, so I've built a membership subscription to go alongside my events. Um, that is peer interviews, it's training, um, it's really interactive, so it's blended learning. So whatever your learning style is, if you like to read, listen, um, watch videos and participate, um, we've got live webinars, we can put a Q&A. Um, it's there, so you, they're not, you're not alone. Um, and I felt really alone. Um, so for me, um, my legacy now is helping other HR um, professionals. Um, and it's a self-development tool. So you don't have to learn on the job in front of that manager with that difficult trade union rep anymore. Um, you can learn it in a safe place, watch it back at your own leisure and sort of have a go yourself and just learn different cultures and how HR is interpreted um, in so many different ways. Um, so I just love the fact that I can give back. Um, and even now from a COVID point of view, we don't know what the future is going to hold for business, let alone HR. Um, and I think we, we have been run ragged the past few weeks, months in HR. Um, so I just hope through this um, situation that we've been thrown into, almost like catapulted into, um, is that we get catapulted um, up to CEO level and we get that credibility that HR deserves. Well, I just, I thank you, Sarah. I just love the passion that you have and having seen your journey and the massive growth that you've experienced in the last few months, I can just hear, you know, that you have those frustrations in the industry itself and that what you actually did. And this is so important for anyone who is thinking about launching their concept that is quite unique, but they're not sure if it's going to work. We had those conversations a few months ago and you said, I'm not sure if it's going to work, but based on what you said, you had done extensive research and I can hear now how deeply you understand the troubles and the challenges that are happening in that industry and therefore created a really unique approach. You have innovation labs. I love that. Innovation labs, regular web webinars. You have the membership. You have the events. You have partnerships where you're actually matchmaking people. So all of that peer genius, that whole concept it has come together really nicely. And you, at the very beginning as well, said that you want it to be a scalable product so that you can serve as many people as possible. So some people shy away from technology, whereas you actually said, you know, I want to embrace technology. And that's what we really want to encourage other people to do, isn't it? Is that when you're, when someone is thinking about starting a business, how should they, or, or launching their new concept, how do you think they should use technology or leverage this? You know, what are your tips on that? Yeah, so from my point of view, I, I'm not technical um, at all. And I've already done my first webinar with COVID again, thrown into that. Um, and I think as well that the support that you gave me um, and the, the platform that we were working on at the moment is so user friendly. And I love the fact that I can edit anything. I, I'm not really a perfectionist, but even then, you can always look at your website. And there's always something that you think, oh, I just want to change that. So I like the fact that I've got the knowledge now. So from the support and the, the three months um, like consultations that we had and the strategy support from you empowered me. So it wasn't a case of you wanted to almost like keep me and keep that control and going, oh, you, you, you don't know the coding, so you don't need to know that. But through that, I didn't even need to know how to code, mm -hmm. yet I can change my own website. Um, so for me, you've empowered me to be in control of my, my own business. So, um, and even from a social media point of view and the session we had on Tuesday, um, doing that automation on LinkedIn, I was like, it's gonna save me so much time. Um, and there is only one of you, so you need to embrace technology Absolutely. in order to be scalable, but it's not as scary as what you actually think. Absolutely. I love what you're saying. And I just have a couple more minutes with you, Sarah. So just very quickly to wrap up, what you're saying is, is you've launched a really unique concept. At the beginning, there were lots of thoughts, you know, is it going to work? Is there going to be a market? But you have the passion, commitment and great ideas and, and unique way of doing things. You really raised the bar and actually now even to a point that you, you know, we don't like to use the word haters, but I think there are even a lot of people that are saying, you know, oh my God, you know, what's it? But they are, they almost imitating what you're doing because you've really created this huge movement that has even become global so you know I, I would love for you just to give a two or three tips to someone who is thinking about you know launching this and if they're having uh, you know launching any of their ideas or concepts you know if they're thinking you know am I cut out for this what am I gonna do you said that it can be really lonely so what what tips or inspiration or words of you know empowerment could you give to to people who feel that they have so much to give that inner drive just like you and ambition and that's a big thing isn't it but just not sure how to channel it. What, what tips could you give just to finish off um, our conversation today? Um, I think the tips, my tips would be is that it, it doesn't happen overnight. 
Um, so the following I've got online and the traction I've got, it's not overnight. And I haven't got a secret um, potion for anything and a secret weapon. So for me, I'm like shocked and surprised. Um, and like, I still can't believe, believe it. I'm like, I don't think I've got anything that's particularly special. Um, I just know how I felt and I was like, I can't be the only one feeling like this and I, I want to give back and I don't want people to feel how I did. Um, so, like, believe in that as well. So, believe in your core values. Um, so, on the days that it's hard and you are getting knockbacks and things aren't quite going your way, um, just I, I literally look through my testimonials on LinkedIn to help, help me. Um, as, as bizarre as that sounds and I just think actually yeah last month it, it wasn't as bad as what today's feeling and today's only temporary um, and start to tomorrow as you mean to go on um, so I love that because sometimes isn't it in business you forget about the achievements that you've had because especially you're such a goal getter you're always future focused so actually you know oh this month I haven't achieved what I had to achieve but actually the last few months have been incredible so you're saying really is to reiterate what you're really already good at and what value you're bringing to the market i love yeah, that exactly. yeah. and then my third and final tip would just be just be resilient um work hard no one else is going to do it for you so you, you've just got to put put it all into it so i do 12 hour days longer don't have any holiday um but i wouldn't change it so don't think it's part time it, you can have more time with your friends and family you can't but if you really want to be successful um like money, money flows where energy goes. I think someone, someone <laughs> I know quite well then taught me that. Um, and I just want to take the opportunity to thank you, Suzanne, for believing in me, and um, because you believed in me in a time that I didn't believe in myself. So I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, and it's been absolute pleasure to work with you. And, and seriously, you are like a, a road runner. You know, you're always on a, on a different project, and you created a huge movement. And I just want. And I've even, you know, recommended you to our other customers to have a look at you as a role model. Um, you may not know that actually, but I say, you know, look what Sarah Potter is doing because what you have created and the value you give to other people, it's huge. And that's the thing is that if you want to be very wealthy and successful, you have to raise your energy levels and that's exactly what you do. And you are a true inspiration. So thank you so much, Sarah, for taking this time to have a chat with us today. Um, and we look, just look forward to seeing you, obviously, in the near future again. And where, where, where is Pia Genius going, by the way? Just very quickly, is it going to go global massively? Yeah. Or I'd love, I'd love it too. Um, but I, I think I just need to probably have a holiday. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. Yes. Yeah, self care is important. Yeah. That's that's the last tip. <laughs> Absolutely. So we now. Um, yeah. So for, for me, it is about um, helping as many HR people as I can. Absolutely. So thank you so much, Sarah, and I uh, can't wait to, to hear and see where it all goes. And thanks for your time today. Pleasure. You thank you again. Take thank care. you very Bye. much. Bye.